Are the biggest yeah. mistake I see people make, and you're you're nailing it, is they rely on integrations and automations. Yeah, so that's gonna that's do not their good. Business. And you know, I don't care how good it does. I don't care if you're using HomeBot, BombBomb, you know, the nine month long drip campaign and throwing in a half a dozen personal videos in there. Those opens diminish. Welcome Lab Code Agents. We're here for another episode with the guys from Street Text and we also have Melissa with us today who's a client who's having great success. So just a little administrative stuff. We will be have a replay of this. I'm sure there's going to be tons of great information that everyone's going to share today. So there will be a replay of this on our YouTube channel. And also we will have an offer for you at some point in time throughout the, the webinar. So pay attention to that as well. But without any further ado, um, we're going to have a, a great conversation about a great street text client today. And so uh, I'm going to pass it over to, to Marcus to, to start us off and, and see where we're going to go from there. Awesome. Well, Melissa, thanks for coming. And you're welcome. I, I want you to kind of go back to the very beginning and Logan will, because Logan works with you more closely than I do, but take me back to the very beginning of your street text experience, maybe even your Facebook experience and maybe what you thought Facebook ads were and kind of what did they evolve to be today, especially not just the experience of okay these are these ads that are going out there and we're, whether they're home value ads or buyer ads or whatever they're they are but the experience from the homeowners or buyers perspective and that how that evolved as you started learning with street text um so you know i started with street text in april of 2019 and i was a newer agent and i just kind of came across you guys on facebook you know delved in did the seven day free trial and um got involved with it uh, you know, you guys post the ads for me. I didn't know a whole lot about street, you know, street text at all or Facebook ads um, at that. So I, you know, went ahead and, and uh, subscribed with you guys. And at first, you know, I was getting tons of leads, tons of leads. The problem is for the first year, I kind of went on and off with you guys, on and off. I'd kind of shut them off, shut them down, suspend my account. I wasn't working the follow-up systems correctly. So here I was getting all these leads, but I really didn't know what to do with them. And it, and it wasn't, your fault that you guys have great masterminds and I never really engaged with any of those things. And I didn't start engaging with those things probably until about April, 2020 is when I really decided to delve in, go to the masterminds, got a lot of great tips, went on there with, uh, you know, starting to implement some, some systems. And to date, um, I actually have, um, 11 listings right now that I've closed since, um, July, 2020. And then three buyer ends uh, in addition to that. So that's 14. And I just went to a coming soon last night um, for Street Tech Sleep. And um, she's going to be a new buyer as well as listing her house with me. So it's all about building relationships, I think, with your guys' system. It's not about, you know, trying to get the hard sale. Some of these people, it's taken me months before they've reached back to me. But it's all about staying top of mind and timing, really. You know, so that's good. one of where, the... Where are you located? Um, I'm out in Temecula, California, Marietta, California, so Riverside County. And then, you know, I service all the, you know, Menifee, Wildemar, Temecula, Marietta, Moreno Valley, the whole Riverside County area. So okay. That's where I'm and at. Yeah. Just typically, what's the average home sale out there in that market? So, you know, the average home sale is probably, um, I would say, mid range of, of 500, and that would be kind of on the, the low end right now. So, about 500 grand average. Okay. And, with that, what kind of ads would you say are the most consistent type of ads you're running to meet these people with Street Tech? So, you know, the what's your home worth ad is really good. And like I said, the reason that I like Street Tech, it's not like I'm cold calling or I'm uh, door knocking. It's like it's already kind of a warm lead. They're asking me for something. So in my mind, I'm like, hey, I'm just providing you what you asked for. You wanted a home value. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to provide it to you. And it's not a matter of if you're going to sell your, your house today, tomorrow, next week or next year. I just want to get that value out to you because that's what you requested. And then I work it from there. I'm building a relationship with the client, depending on you know how they engage. I just keep trying to touch them. They're not going to always get back to you for the first time. Sometimes I have to resend my bomb bomb video multiple times to make sure that they open it. 
Oh, bomb bomb. What's, what's, what's bomb bomb? Oh, bomb bomb. Is my, <laughs> that's my friend because video for me is, you know, I hated video because like seeing myself and oh, and how I sound. But you know what? Ultimately, and I learned that actually from John Perry. You know what? I hate to tell you, but that is what you look like and that's what you hear. So, so you know, just go with it and and uh, go with the video because people can see your personality. They can see that you're real. I'm not for everyone and I know that. I'm super hyper. You either hate me or love me and that's okay because there is someone for me. There's someone for everyone, you know? Um, love that. Bomb Bomb is a great way to track um, your your uh, videos that go out on street tech. So I do it with video instead of just, I used to do emails in the beginning because like I said, I wasn't going to the mastermind classes. That's what I love about street tech's platform. The mastermind classes are so awesome because it's agents from all over that are successful and they teach you how to be successful and you can learn little things to reach agent and make it into your own. So with Bomb Bomb, they have a tracking system and I can tell if someone's engaging with my video. So I can say, hey, this person watched hundred percent of my video. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and send out a follow-up to that person right away. The other day, how I got my coming soon listing, um, I had reached out to this guy back in May. He wasn't ready. He said, my wife, you know, she makes the decisions. I said, I get it. I sent him out a card, um, you know, didn't really hear back. I kind of put him in my CRM, stayed top of mind. And then the other day I noticed he was back in watching my bomb bomb video. So immediately I sent him, hey, just checking in. I wanted to see how, um, you know, do you have any questions for me about the real estate market? That was it. He immediately replied back and he's like, it must have been meant to be like my wife and I were just talking about putting the house up and here you reached out again while, you know, bomb bomb let helped me with that. So I just went to the appointment last night and I listed their home in coming soon and they need to buy a new build. But, you know, this was back from May. But if I wouldn't have stayed on them with the video, then it, it wouldn't have I wouldn't have, you know, been able to follow up the way that I could with with hotter leads, people that I know are their timing is right. And I'm just showing people just the idea of what that experience would be. So they'd go into your, they'd go to some random news feed, you know, yep. in that 15 mile Temecula area that you're that you're in. They'd see this ad. It'd say, "What's your home really worth?" Enter your address, receive your home value. They'd click on it probably from their phone. Yeah. Right. And this yep. first thing would be analyze my property, and you know, people at this point would be like, "Oh, I'm gonna get an instant market value." Right. That's what they're probably thinking. It's gonna go and say your home is worth six hundred thousand yeah. dollars or whatever and then they're like oh i actually have to provide an email to be contacted and so that begins the digital door knocking opportunity which in a sense that's where you would have an automatic video going out right melissa yes i do i have an automatic video that says you know i'm on it you know give me 48 hours this is not an automated uh valuation i actually do each valuation you know on my own and it goes out and then if i don't hear back from them i also send out a another video saying hey did you did you get my email are there <laughs> any upgrades or any things that i should know about your house that will help me get you a more accurate value and um at that point i do give them what they ask which is the home value i try to always do that within 48 hours because that's where i've missed the boat before you know i'm not perfect i'm human you start getting behind on your leads and getting too many leads and then you're not working the leads appropriately tons of leads mean nothing if you're not working them properly you know it's 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 not about how many it's about the quality of how you work them and, and the building of relationships because if, you know when someone's looking at this they might they might be a year out from listing their house or six months or maybe even two years who knows or maybe they're not going to list right now at all and they give you a referral i had that happen with one of my street first street text appointments i went out older couple super nice they, they weren't going to sell had me in for coffee i just I said i'm here to you know bring your valuation sat down at the kitchen table and they asked me if i wanted coffee the wife was a little defensive at first but again we were all laughing and he said you know what i'm not ready to list my house right now melissa but i am going to list with you when it's time to sell my house and i said oh i i appreciate you know you, you thinking of me he goes no i will list my house with you well about two weeks later i got a referral from him the neighbor across the street was selling his house he referred me and that guy owned two houses so i got two listings out of that from a client, and I'm still friends with those people, and I will eventually get the listing on their house as I stay. They're part of my sphere of influence now. But hey, I got two referrals just by just by providing a service to the client. So it's about adding value. Everyone doesn't want a hard sale. I hate a hard sale. I, you know, when I go to the car lot, it's like, oh, oh, just hold on here. Let me you know, take a step back. So that's kind of the approach that I take. It works for my personality. Just giving them what they want and then staying top of mind and being there when they hopefully are ready to sell and. Not that I'm always going to win it, but I'm certainly going to try. 
You know, and then that's kind of what we typically see as well is one of the first items that I always try to recommend to everybody, and I'm sure I would have recommended it to you back in 2019 <laughs> as well, is let's get on video. And most of us, or at least a lot of us, are initially hesitant to do so because for me, it's the same thing. I look at myself on video and I hear myself and it's just exactly the same thing you said. It's like, is that really what I look like? In some? Right. And it's, it's a hard hurdle to get over, but then all of a sudden, you know, you, you put it out there and you get a couple you know, good feedback and you're like, oh, okay, well, this is worth doing. And then the next time you do it, you're a little bit more confident and comfortable and things yep. get better. I have one of my favorite stories is um, she was a, a new brand new agent, brand new to street techs, brand new to our country. So she had just moved to, to Canada from, from elsewhere. And her big hesitation was, I don't speak English very well and I have a really thick accent and I'm worried that as soon as people meet me or see me or hear me, they're going to avoid me. So my question, you know, she said, so should I get somebody else to do my video for me? And so same thing, my, my answer back was in my view, well, is somebody else going to do your listing appointments? She said, no, right. I was like, then absolutely not. You need to be the face of your brand. And if somebody's going to choose that they didn't want to work with you for whatever the reason is, let's let's let them choose that now without us wasting our time and them wasting theirs because more people are going to want to work with you simply based on the fact that you appear friendly, that you you seem to have, you know, other people's then you're just your own best interest in mind. And I think that comes through on video is, you know, I can write the most eloquent, well-worded email ever but it's up to interpretation. Whereas my video, it's hard to interpret that any other way than what I meant and how I meant it and what I said. So it's that that extra level of personalization, even though I can't say, hey, Melissa, it's Logan, yada, 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 because my first video is an automation, but it can come off as more personal. It feels like a real person is actually here to talk to you. And what one thing in my career that I've found, <clears throat> you know, as I sold more and more homes and, you know, won some awards here and there, I didn't make more sales because of the awards that I won. I wasn't flaunting my awards. I wasn't wearing medals around my listing appointments, right? And then that wasn't even part of my listing presentation. Hey, I sold 32 homes, you know, in the last eight months. Isn't that great? Shouldn't you pat me on the back? <laughs> Absolutely not. They don't care. Wow. It's, do you have my best interest in mind? Are you a real person who I feel I can trust? That is what people want. And that's really it. Yep. So, you know, the fastest Absolutely. way to do that is I'm a real person. Here it is. I'm on camera. I'm here to help you. You let me know how I can help you. And you're going to yep. get that help, right? You'd agree with that, you'd say? Correct. Yeah. Not making things so perfect. So I'm a perfectionist. I'm a Virgo. It's like everything has to be perfect. And so what I would find is that I'm sitting here from the camera, redoing it, redoing it. Finally, I'm like, you know what? No one is perfect. And I'm just going to go with it. Done is better than not done. So I just started doing the videos and, you know, some of them might've been hokey, but I still got deals out of them. So I just, I just go with it. And the more you do them, the better you get, you know, I have teenagers. So my daughter's friend was here. I'm sitting at the kitchen counter where I'm working doing my videos and my earbuds. She heard me off and she goes, that was really good. So I'm thinking, oh, a teenager game, you know, she goes, you sounded so, you know, so you get better and better the more you do it again and again with my valuation videos that I do. And, you know, I've been trying to shorten them up a little bit. I've, I've had have a little problem with that. I, they're, they're about three to four minutes long. And I think that's a little bit too long for video. I think if I can shorten them up to, to a couple minutes, because people's attention span is just so, so uh, poor anymore with all of our devices that we have, but yeah, you can scale so much more business this way. Um, instead of knocking on, I couldn't knock a hundred doors. I don't know how long that would take me to knock a hundred doors, but if you're on Facebook and you work, these, these are people that are raising their hand already saying, Hey, they want to value for some reason. And maybe they are just curious and that's okay. But like I said, if I can even push for the referral, then that's awesome. And, you know, once I do send a value out, if I find that it's that it's a hot lead or someone that seems to be engaging with my video, I make sure that I send out a little handwritten card um, that basically just says, thanks for reaching out on Facebook. If you haven't received your value by net valuation by now, you should have. It was emailed on this date to this email address. Please check your junk mail or your inbox. Thank you, Melissa. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help. And then I put have a coffee on Mal and I throw a Starbucks uh, gift card in the card. And I've actually gotten listing appointments from that silly little Starbucks card. People like coffee. So me, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> um, so that there's so much to dissect there. Wow. There's so much to dissect. Okay. Quick question. We just had someone um, ask how many of those emails would you say are fake that someone gives? Because I think, um, what I stopped and I showed people that it's an address followed by an email, and then obviously they can provide more information, time frame for selling, mm -hmm. updates, renovations. Some will give you their full information with right. name, phone number. Um, so how do you react to all those style of leads, including the address only, is because you'll get those as well. But on that side, how have you found in terms of email 
communication, how many of those people would you say are verified emails? Oh, yeah, I say all, most of the emails are all good. I mean, I get some, you know, you get weird ones sometimes and I'll be like, I got another one the other day, like no mail. And I'm like, okay, obviously, you know, I'm not going to waste my time with this. I'll send over a little email saying, hey, is this the correct information? And then I see if it bounces back. But for the most part, the emails are usually legit. Now, it might be an email. I know that I have an email that I give to people. You know, it's more of my junk email. But again, that's why I like that card that I do, because if they did want the value and I send out that card, then they're getting a handwritten card in the mail, which people don't do anymore. You know, it's personally handwritten by me. And um, then if they really did want that value, they can see that I did email them on the date and to what email address. So they can go back in through their email or their spam and check for my email in there so that I can make sure that they that they watch it. So honestly, I mean, the, the, most of the leads are legit. I don't think there's a such thing as bad leads. I think it has to do with your follow-up systems. Absolutely. Because let me tell you, in the beginning, I blew it with a lot of leads. I could have had a lot more listings, but I wasn't implementing any kind of system. There's the, the one thing yeah. that I like to quickly address here, I call it the 1% phenomenon. And it's an understanding that I think that across the board, we can all agree that if we're not closing and converting 1% of, of our leads, something has gone drastically wrong. But there's also an expectation in my view, 10% is absolutely attainable. The, the issue is not everybody gets to that 10%. And the reason for it is because you generate maybe 100 leads too quickly or whatever it might be. You don't have the time to go after and get everybody you know, that, 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 you, that are there out of 100 leads. I can almost guarantee you, like there's going to be junk leads, 100% on mm -hmm. the best ad that you could ever run. There's absolutely going to be junk leads and a good amount of them, that's fine. There's also going to be out of every 100, I would assume at least 10 people who are ready to buy or sell a home with you. Now, the issue is, can you get to all 10 of them in time before somebody else does? And that's why those percentages come down and down and down because we don't have the right mechanisms in place. We don't have the reach outs in the right place. We don't have our messaging corrected. You know, we can come in and generate a hundred leads. And I'd say even a blind squirrel finds a nut, you're gonna sell a home here and there, <laughs> right? But yeah. really to maximize and get to that, you know, my, my expectation is 6%. You know, the industry standard I believe is three. 3% 3 is, is kind of that benchmark where the industry says you should be converting 3% of your leads minimum. But over what time? I think that's the hard part too, is because what I find the biggest mistake people make, especially with Facebook, Instagram, social media, is they come in from a perspective that maybe is traditional lead generation, right? Mm -hmm. Zillow, Trulia, Realtor, even Google paid for SEO. When you interrupt someone's Facebook newsfeed, they weren't looking for you. That's the idea of top of funnel. So all they think they're getting in that moment is something that says instant value. All they think they're getting in that moment is your listing information or that list of homes in Temecula with horse ranches. I'm just making it up, mm -hmm. right? That's all they think. They're, they yep. have no idea on the other side of that. There's actually a human that's going to connect with them. Right. So I yeah. think subjective, your follow up has to be genuine, has to make you feel, uh, make that person feel like it's authentic, that you're coming from a place of consulting, not selling, that yeah. you're, you're going to bring value and you're going to ask questions that are not traditional, like, are there any updates or renovations that I should be aware of, right? What do you yeah. love most about your home? What, you know, what was that thing that, that drew you to your home when you first purchased it years ago? Uh, you know, what Very would true. be one thing you would change, right? And, and of course, when they go back to their email and the first thing they see is you, you know, sort of casual person with the pink shirt on and a hat, you know? Yeah, um, I just gotta be me. It's just gotta be <laughs> like you. I just, I'm you like, know? I'm just gonna start doing these. <laughs> and there you are, and it's 30 seconds. Anybody can take 30 seconds out of their time to, to see what this instant market value is all about and what you're going to do for them. So yeah, I think that's I what separates you right there from the get go. Yeah, I, I, I love it because like I said, I'm not a big, I, I like to serve, not sell. That's my personality. I've been in sales my whole life. I sold uh, high end cosmetics when I was younger, insurance. I've been a bartender. That's not really in the sales, but you know, I mean, I don't know, the, the, the cold call door knock for me just doesn't do it. For this, I love it because someone's asking for something and I'm providing them value. I'm providing them something they want and they want it for a reason. And I just feel like if you're giving people knowledge in the market and you're adding value that when it comes time to sell their home or if they wanna buy a home, then they're gonna think of you. You're gonna be top of mind if you implement your follow-up systems correctly. And how simple, how simple is it for you to launch one of those ads? I think someone just asked, okay, so do I have to do this myself? I think you go in there and you're like, oh, 
I know because I've been trained by Logan how easy it is for me to go. Yeah. Select, you right. You guys simply, teach us how to do it. So it's yeah, really simply easy. just pull in any image I want, you know, stock, whether it's stock or an image that you already want. Mm -hmm. Right. So I could go and say, oh, I'm going to use this home today because I I've seen this, you know, it's one of your homes. Click next, drop a pin in, you know, Temecula just for fun. Right. Mm -hmm. Click, click done next. And then split test that right because you want to see how they split test because all ads are not created equally sometimes one will do way better than the other one because of the audiences you've taught me about all that i've tried to run my own facebook ads in the past and it just it's a placement i just that is not my thing i don't have time for that and they just have never worked and i've spent money on them and you know again it's more of that hard sell more of than this i'm just simply hey you wanted a home value you know doesn't matter if you're thinking of selling today tomorrow next week or next year always a good idea to know what kind of equity you're sitting on and that's what i'm doing providing you um you know information about what you requested so you know there's people like oh you're trying to sell no actually i you know i mean yeah of course, if you're if you're <laughs> if you're looking to sell, I can help you. But I'm honestly just providing you what you asked for. That's what yeah. I always come back. Those to. are always my favorite comments. Yeah. Like you're just trying to sell my home. I'm like, mm, yeah, yeah, I am. I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm here to help you right. sell your home. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, by providing information, and then I try to. I've been trying to go in and set my videos up to where. I, I need to change them around again, but we're, you know, I'll just send little videos of value out after I've sent the value. Like, you know, right now the big thing is, um, you know, appraisal is not coming in. You know, what do I do if my appraisal doesn't come in at appraised value and how we're getting around those obstacles. So just quick little, you know, under one minute videos that'll go out after that, that I'm implementing, you know, What's things that you can do without spending money to clean your house up before you put it on the market. What would you say Simple a typical thing. wavelength of, or, or timeline for, from your experience from starting Street Text of someone who comes in with what your home really worth to you end up actually listing your home based on all 12 of those deals and how, and with that being said, tell me a little bit how you stayed in front of them along the way to, to, to make sure you were top of mind. Well, so, so some of them, you know, some of them I've gotten lucky where, you know, they were actually ready to list in a month, but it's just, again, the bomb bomb tracker really helps me a lot because I can see who's engaging in my video. So those are always going to be my hottest prospects to follow up on because I'm like, they're actually engaging with me. They're watching this stuff. So there must be a reason they're going back in and watching my uh, value, you know? So I try to just send a quick little, you know, like I said, sometimes just a quick little sentence about it. Or sometimes they're like, you know, not ready yet. You know, I had one guy in Riverside and he was moving to Arizona. And I think it took me probably about four months from start to finish before I got him. I, I started um, in August and... I listed him finally in December because his new build wasn't going to be ready yet. And he wasn't just quite ready, but I mean, I just stayed top of mind with, I dropped off that that's another thing that I like to do. I like to, if it's a hot lead, I will drop off a actual valuation at their house. Like I'll make a little goodie bag out of it and put it on the door. And I have these coffee mugs that, you know, I don't know if you can see it, but you know, it's just my, you know, it says it's all about you, not me. Love and it. I throw a couple pins in there with my listing, pre-listing kind of presentation. And that way, not only have they gotten the video, but then they have something in their hands. But I don't waste a whole lot of time with doing that unless I feel like I've had some engagement because you can really run yourself ragged. If I could do it for everyone, uh, I'd probably have a lot more listings though, to tell you the truth, because it does add, you know, value when they see that. So it just really depends. Sometimes you can, you can get them right away if they're ready. And other times it's taken four months. This guy that I have an appointment with now, I've actually been working on him for like almost two years and he's finally going to give me the appointment. And I just have him in my CRM, just monthly newsletters. And, you know, I'll, I'll send out a video here and there about a market update. You know, here's what's going on in the real estate market. Just simple things that you hear people asking about all the time. I try to do my videos based on what people are asking or problems that are going on in real estate right now. Just I wanted to ask videos. you a, a little bit more about that, just because this is something here on, on our side that we see Marcus sees, I see it all the time is people come in, you know, do their trial and typically generate a ton of leads and everything's good. Maybe they don't get the, the strongest conversation started within the first seven days. So it's like, okay, well, I generate a bunch of leads, but you know, I'm not, I'm not seeing the, the, the finish line. Like I was hoping to see in my first seven days. So they're out. And typically a, a lot of the time within that two to three month mark, I'll start hearing back from those same people going, wouldn't you know it, I've closed a few of these deals now, or at least these people I'm going on listing appointments, I don't know what's what's happened, but this is all working now. So they'll come back and they'll, they'll sign up. Now, the problem that we see is now you have a two to three month lull 
in where you weren't generating those leads, you start again fresh, which is perfectly fine. But would you say you've experienced anything kind of like that yourself where somebody you were, you were thinking they, they should be coming through and it takes a little bit longer to, to get. It, like, it does take, it's definitely a nurturing process. You know what I mean? You, you have to, it, it, most of the time, unless it's just a random thing. I mean, you know, you can get lucky. It, it's happened to me, but you know, a lot of times it's, it's building that relationship and selling someone's home is a big deal. So, you know, they're not going to just, most people aren't just going to, okay, yeah, here, you gave me a value. Come on over and, and list my home. It's hard enough to even get people. I always try to use the approach. Well, Hey, can I come over and see the home? And people are weird about that sometimes too. Then they're feeling like, you know, Oh, you're, you know, trying to sell me something. And you know, I you could do the virtual ones. And a lot of times I'll ask people for pictures because that's like the most non, and then you know, I'll get people that I think, well, you know, they're engaging, they're sending me these pictures for a reason. And, you know, and then I just try to stay top of mind. Um, I've been using HomeBot. I just started using that. And that's a pretty cool platform, but I'm just getting into that. But that's a pretty cool way because it's just automated. And once you throw them in there, they can get that monthly market update. So it's like, you don't have to do it all, you know? So the less that you have to do, the better. But if you go too over automated and you're not putting that personal touch in there, then that, then you can fly to the wind too. You start going to people's junk mail and stuff, which you don't want to do. And that's what we call value stacking, where you, you always have another offer. There's always something else you can offer them. And I think the, the, the biggest issue is you've got, let's say seven things you can offer. A lot of people just rapid fire. Okay. Give me this, give me this, give me this. And they don't initiate that conversation. And you know, step one, two, and three, in my view of getting any listing is get them, getting them talking to you. Yeah. So yeah, you need automations to kind of filter who's where and what's what and all that stuff, but you do need the ability to manually step in every so often and go, Hey, this is what you were looking for. I bet you would love if I gave you this, this, and this, right? Yeah. Well, you give me this, then I'll give you that. How does that sound? So the, the quickest one for me is understanding a lot of these people who are looking to sell their home, a lot of them are unsure of what they're going to move into and what they're going right. to buy and what they can afford and all those things. So I like to, you know, prop, uh, you know, propose a solution in a sense where it's like, you want to know what you can buy. Well, in order to know what you can buy, we need to know what you can afford. In right. order to know what you can afford, we need to set and establish a budget. Only way to establish a proper budget is to A, have you maybe meet with a lender, but more importantly, <laughs> we need to see your current assets and value them. And then we can use that to establish a budget and I can help you find a home. Also, one thing that's going to affect your home's value is activity around you. So not only is knowing your home's value important, but would you not like to know about the activity around you? If you let me know that this is something you'd like, I'd be happy to set you up on an instant notification alert, letting you know property types like yours in your area. There's so many different things that we can offer these people. And I like personally, my automations to be a little bit more general and vague in terms of my offerings. And then when I get somebody engaging with me and now they're talking to me personally, I turn my automations off for the most part. And now yeah, they have manual check-ins on a weekly or monthly basis. And anything yeah. that I think they need, I start offering them. We build a relationship. They grow to trust me. They ask me for information and darn it, they get something hopefully better than they're expecting. Yeah. They're going to be I my client. Agree or more, firm, Logan. Right? I can agree more. The biggest yeah. mistake I see people make and you're, you're nailing it is they rely on integrations and automations. Yeah, so that's, gonna that's do not their good. Business. And, you know, I don't care how good it is. I don't care if you're using HomeBot, BombBomb, you know, the nine month long drip campaign and throwing in a half a dozen personal videos in there. Those opens diminish yep. and they get lost in folders. And what I would, the key takeaway that I got from you, Melissa, was, was also that you use the tracking. Yes, so when, I do. When a lot of people, I, I, I tell them, okay, Great, you're gonna throw some video in your automations. Awesome, you're better than a lot of people not doing that. But then, what are you gonna to do to make sure that that open rate is 100%? Like we have, you know, Jennifer Salter. Where we talked about. She's like, I get about 100% video open. I'm like, how? She's like, well, I'll send it six different ways to make sure they get it. <laughs> yeah, and I learned that from her. That's from the mastermind. I mean, you know, that's what I love about your your group. You can learn so much from different agents that tell you all their tricks and secrets, and then you just try it. And it works. <laughs> and your personality has got, a, I mean, everybody's got a different personality profile. Right. You know, even Janky talks about, as a lab code moderator, she says, you match their disc profile. You know, if that person, you may be a DI and you're going to match their high energy, whereas this other person is going to be more analytical. So you're going to go over market stats a little bit more and yeah. break it down for them. Um, so I think that's ultimately not one person is the same. And I'm a big fan too of trying to 
communicate you need to humanize it for you just as much as you want it humanized for them so yep. why aren't you actively looking for them on social and trying to make connections on facebook because after all it did appear in their personal newsfeed. Right. So you can friend them. You can friend them on Facebook. You know, you can let them know that, hey, I'm going to send you. Once I've kind of gotten a, a rapport going with someone, I'll say, hey, I'm going to shoot you over a friend request. So, you know, you know, it's me. And I've got people that way that, you know, I've, I've made friends with on Facebook by, you know, and then you're top of their mind. They can see what's going on with you. And people like to know about you. And so I just try to keep it real. I, I can't be fake. It's just not my personality. So well, like I said, works, it's though. that's what people, people again, to take it back to the beginning is people don't care about awards. They care about people. They don't. And if we care about them, they can, they can see that and they can feel True. that in regards to the insider group and, and, and the LCA group and, and these meetings and everything like that. This is why we do that is because my job and Marcus's job and everybody's job would be so darned easy if there was one strategy. If I could just say, hey, everybody, <laughs> this is how you generate leads and convert them, rubber stamp it, we're done, right? It would be the easiest thing ever. Yeah, I'd be out of a job probably. You would, would need us, right? But there, that is not the case. It's never yeah. the case. There's, you know, I, I look in it and Marcus uh, alluded to Janky. I think what Janky is able to do with the disc profile, her understanding of it and how she applies it is phenomenal. But I was actually just having a conversation with a, a client of mine the other day when we were talking about the disc profile and I got to realizing... I personally never use that and I don't follow it very well. So when Janky is, you know, dropping all these nuggets of gold about how she uses it, I'm like, uh -huh. eh, it doesn't work for me. It works. Clearly it works for her and it's going to work for a large percentage of people who do follow that strategy. But for me, do I want to take the time to really dive into every letter and what it means? Does that, is that going to work for me? No. So I start looking for other people who are doing something more in my mindset. And I'm like, oh, that's the strategy for me. We get people who are relentless door knockers, right? Cold yep. call door knockers. And I door knocked in my career and it was beneficial. I, I closed a lot of deals from it. I didn't enjoy doing it. So I wouldn't <laughs> choose to do it again myself. It's not something I like to do, but I've seen a ton of success with that activity. So now what we can look at is, okay, you have to have an address only, you know, um, strategy. If you're not door knocking, well, darn it, you better have some, some good mailers because if not, you're missing out on a huge component <clears throat> of these leads that, I mean, they, they may not be ready to give you their email or their phone number or something, but they're homeowners. They have an address. We should be, yeah. we should figure out a way to get in touch with them. That's right? true. So it's all about That's finding the strategy that you like and an, an amalgamation of, I'm going to look at, I'm look at Janky. I'm going to look at Jen. I'm going to look at Melissa. I'm going to see Wendy. I'm going to see who's doing what. And, Ooh, I don't like that as much. Ooh, that's cool. But you can pick and yep. choose and cherry pick your strategy. Cause there's a billion strategies out there. And again, I always, it always comes back to me, come to the insider group, come to the mastermind, mm -hmm. be a part of LCA. These are the places that you learn from other people who have got skin in the game and who are, who are doing good stuff. And it's, it's, you're doing yourself a disservice by not learning. And oftentimes, like in your story, you come in, you get all these leads and it's like, oh, nothing's closing. I'm out of here. Right? Yeah. I love it. You put the time interrupt it. Like, oh, look interrupt it up. Their, and interrupt, sure. interrupt their, their, their patterns too. I, I've heard recently we, we get a phone number and we don't realize that we could just send a video text for free, mm -hmm. right? It's like no one would ever expect a video text. That's why you do it because no one would ever expect it. And so if you have a phone number, that, that's an advantage right there in itself because we're so used to using Julie or AI or, you know, whatever. We can send audio, we can send video, we can try to find them on Facebook. We can think outside the box. So that's that's the key is don't put yourself in the box. See what box you best fit in, model it, don't reinvent the wheel, find what you, you love and just take little bits and pieces and make it your own. Yep, and then implement it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to, you know, because so, so many things you can watch and watch and watch, but if you're not going to actually set up your systems and put them in place, I mean, the leads, they're only as good as you follow up on them. So I would say not to get so many leads that you can't, you can't follow up with all of them. Too, too many leads can be a bad thing if you're not focusing on them and, and putting a system in place behind each lead. You know, if you're just looking at the leads and then, you know, I did that in the beginning too, but I've learned. <laughs> 
Brian, we've you you have something to say. We've we kind of I cut do. you out of the conversation for the last half an hour. Brian, <laughs> that's okay. You know, it it I, I can honestly say this is the easiest hosting job I've had in months. Um, <laughs> and, and I got to give a lot of credit to Melissa. You you just kind of say one thing and she and it elaborates and it's fabulous. But I wanted to add, do two things. First of all, I wanted to remind everybody as you're watching live, ask us questions because Melissa's having a ton of success, and and the three of us can pontificate, and that's great. But if you have a question that you you can actually dig in and she can share please please ask that and then i have one simple question for you melissa and, and we didn't prepare you for this so if you don't know it's you, no, no fail here do you have an approximate monthly budget that you spend um so probably i try to keep it around 500 bucks okay for my for my advertising and my street tech stuff i try to stay there but i do go a little over sometimes so i would say in the range of between five to seven hundred bucks a month depending uh -huh. on you know and here's, let me, let me tell you why I'm going to ask that question. I'm just going to do some simple math for all of you. You know, we've heard different, we've talked about different places in the funnel and different types of leads and, you know, well, this leads good, this leads bad. And, and, you know, there's definitely, if you go out and buy a $300 lead and there's plenty of them out there, that's probably a higher intent lead. But here's what I wanted to do. If, if this is what I'm just doing some guessing in about 14 months, that means you've spent about ten thousand dollars. That's just a round number, so I'm going to use that. And in fourteen months, it looks like you're going to have about fourteen closes. I think is what you said between buyers and sellers, and and your average commission runs about twelve thousand five hundred. Is that is everything I said relatively accurate there? We lost you. Are you there? Yeah. In the so, math in your head there, I think <laughs> it's like yeah, you don't <laughs> yeah. It, 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 Here's why I'm asking all these questions, because we talked about different personality types. There's somebody on here who's watching this who goes, well, this is all great, but am I going to make any money using street text? And so basically what I'm, I just, I'll just do quick math for everybody who's kind of watching. For every dollar that Melissa is spending based on the information that she gave us, she makes about 16 and a half dollars. So I want you guys to think about that. What other lead source, and that means, you know, you have to do it her way also, also, but I don't know a lot of lead sources that you're going to get a 16 plus ROI on. So that's a uh, very impressive. And, and, and by the way, Street Text is a great system and it provides great leads, but we have to understand, and this is what I heard Melissa say over and over again, I got to do a lot of work. So yeah. those of you who think you're just going to push the magic button no. and you're going to get tons <laughs> of leads and they're all just going to be hand raises, that's not what we're talking about. But when you build a system out like Melissa has, and and that's what Street Text is all about, you know, a 16 ROI is pretty darn good. So um, congratulations is, is the other Thank thing I you. want to say. Yeah, so. it works. If you, if you work the system, it works. Like you said, you got to work the leads. You have and to, you can't just let them sit there and look at them and think that they're going to come sell their house with you. <laughs> and remember too, your ROI wasn't 16 in three months. It wasn't 16 in six months. It wasn't 16 in a year, right? It's a, ROI with systems like this and solutions increase exponentially the longer you stick with them. Yes. Um, the the I biggest agree. disconnect I see people make is they come into street tax and they're like, I'm going to go try it out for 90 days. And then they quit and they're like, well, I never got my ROI. I just spent a bunch of money and, you know, these are all tire kickers. And then, you know, I get so many of those type of, of type of people that are thinking it's just this magic fix. Right. And like, it's not. Well, did you measure that on conversations? You know, and, and are you be able to see the future? Do you going you know, to tell me six months from now, a year from now? And we have so many people that come back later and like, you were so right. They weren't ready. I got this deal. I'm ready to go all in. <laughs> yep, it's true. And I did that in the beginning. I would kind of start, stop, come back, stop for that, you know. And so, and then I, I go back through all my old leads because I still have them. And there are so many people that listed their house. That's what I'm doing now, starting back at the bottom of my original leads and just going back through because the market's hot. And, you know, if they haven't sold, I'm going to reach out and give them a new updated value. Let's make sure we answer a question because I, I think we, we have a disgruntled listener, I think, but that's okay. It all worked <laughs> out. So, you know, the, the, this was advertises how to create Facebook ads. And here's what one of the things that happens with street text. It's so unbelievably simple that that couldn't possibly be a 45 minute webinar. So either Logan or, or, or Marcus, would you show the audience just real quick, how easy it is to create a Facebook ad using street text. And I think we, we want to make sure that we give the people what they what they came for. Logan, why don't you talk us through it? Sure. Okay, because you're the, we, Logan's kind of our ad expert around here. So I'll go right into our funnel builder. And so you, this is what you activate when you get with street text. Walk us through how easy it is to, to set up an ad. 
Yeah, I mean, just using the tagline Facebook ads made easy, I would say that is street text. That's what we do. And look at street text like an intermediary, a go between between what you're trying to accomplish on Facebook and Facebook. <laughs> because we always say, you know, Facebook can be the labyrinth of frustration and confusion. It can be very difficult. And as soon as you become a Facebook expert, you know where your ad templates are, you know where everything is. Well, you log in tomorrow and it's all changed. So what we try to do is offer that level of consistency that isn't there on Facebook. The only thing consistent on Facebook is change. Now, granted, Facebook's always changing for the better. For the most part, whether we see it or not, the changes they make long term really are good. But when it's changing frequently, it's very frustrating. So what we try to do is when the buttons change on Facebook, when everything goes everywhere, we stay consistent and our button stays in the same place. It might touch different buttons on Facebook now. So what you need to know, know is when you use a, a, a platform like ours, it's so ridiculously easy to launch an ad. In fact, you can build a three ad split test in less than 15 seconds. So for instance, if you want to start with our easiest to set up ad would be the seller's tips ad here. It's a take on um, kind of a blog post style article. It's really easy. Marcus is just going to hit select there for us. Comes up, he hits next again. It's going to ask us for a privacy policy. If you don't already have one in place, we will have implemented our own. Go ahead and hit next. Uh, you're going to have targeting. So you can either type in a, uh, a city there, which we don't recommend. We've already kind of gone through. You always want to drop a pin so you can really make sure that this is set up properly. We put in, you know, Temecula or whatever it might be. You can make it 15 to 50 miles. You can move it around, all sorts of fun stuff we can teach you in terms of targeting. If you were, weren't interested in Temecula, let's say you were only interested in, you know, Carlsbad Oceanside, for instance, well, use the, you know, the, the map to your, your benefit. You can drag it out into the ocean. The fish don't click, right? So now you're only covering <laughs> the area that you're looking to cover, right? But we can help you select all that. And again, it, it becomes super easy. And once you're happy with your targeted area, simply lock it in, hit done. You got a latitude, longitude. Now we're set. You hit next. Select a daily budget per ad. I think $9 a day is appropriate, regardless of whether you're building ads on street text or doing this yourself. We've identified $9 a day as being the perfect starting ground for almost anywhere. Know the higher your median price point, the higher the expectations would be just based on the fact that there's typically more competition. And I'm not just referencing other agents, but in an area, you know, let's say like Las Vegas, there's a lot of tourism advertising that you're going to come up against. In an area like you know Southern California, for instance, it might not be other agents, but there's Nike, Adidas, Coca-Cola. There's big companies spending big dollars and it's an auction space regardless of the ad that you're running. So you might need to compete a little bit more, but we feel $9 a day is a great starting ground to see what happens. And you can always raise slightly up or down from there. Um, split test. You've all heard me talk relentlessly of a split test, I'm sure. So I won't, you know, waste too much time on, on that one, but you can then build three perfect mirror images of each other right now, right? You can run it on Facebook and Instagram, if you like, um, in Melissa's area, I would say you're probably closer to 15 for a deal. I would say is probably more accurate. So we'd put that in and then you hit deploy. You've just launched three perfect mirror versions of each other. You'll then log into the ads section of Street Text and You don't have to go and do this on, on Facebook. You log into our ad section where we've got all of the stats displayed with everything, all the relevant information you need. And I think that again, becomes one of the most important components here is that on ads manager, I try all the time to help people through ads manager and we've become experts, I'll call it. And I'm lost sometimes we'll get in and things are moved and cost per click and spend are on different screens and you have to get into ad sets. You have to get into all these different levels to just find three pieces of important information. How much have I spent? How many leads have I got? And what's my cost per? Pretty darn important information. I shouldn't have to visit three screens to get all the, those three pieces of information. So on our system, it's all there real time. You come in here and now we can look at the three ads stacked on top of one another. You don't have to you know, go from screen to screen and level to set to, it's just boom, it's here. What are my costs? How do they compare to one another? And what's best? The other thing that's really important and something that unfortunately you can't do on Facebook specifically is to say, now I've got three ads. They're identical, fine but they're all latched on to a unique demographic. The ads are the same, but in Facebook size, they're unique and they're each gonna test differently like we always talk about in the split test. So now, which one of these ads, it, let's say they're all performing similarly. They're, the stats are similar, great. Which one's getting me better quality leads or at least the leads in the area I most want? Well, you go to one of these ads and you hit where it says show leads. Yeah. It only displays the leads that one ad has found with the expectation of 
that one ad should keep finding people of a similar nature. So if I'm running one of these home valuation ads and I'm going through and I'm seeing the addresses and they're mostly on the outskirts of what I want, eh, that's not what I'm looking for. So I'd go to the next one. And if it's slightly more expensive leads, but I hit the show leads button and darn it, they're within my inner core of what I'm truly looking for. I'm going to do my own kind of cost ratio analysis and decide, well, I would rather spend an extra buck or two a lead to get more of this area that I want or less of the trailer parks, more of the multi-million dollar area, whatever it is. But understand every single ad you launch has its own unique opportunity for sex, success or failure based on the first 500 people that viewed it and how they reacted. And we Look can at this. Up. Look at this though. Like, you know, the, her, sent her a home bot, uh, sent Starbucks from the card. She loved my video. You need to take notes like that, right? Yep. 650 to 75K video. You know, that in itself, is a huge takeaway because there's one thing to recognize. Look, I mean, look at these detailed notes you're talk, you're taking with each one of yeah, these. Yeah, your CRM's great for that. I love it. And you can see who's opening up your stuff in there too. So and you can add them to Homebot with a click of the button now. Yes, know, you can. Listen, I've been doing that. Well, I'm that awesome? new to Homebot, so that's a new feature, but I I, I love it. Awesome. We important. got a couple of questions and I, you know, because we're right at time right now. And I, as long as you guys don't mind going over a couple of minutes, then we'll then we'll answer a couple of questions. Someone says that they've only worked with buyers to date. Do you recommend street treks if you per, currently don't have a listing? So I'll just throw that out for someone to someone to answer it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I would suggest again, the company was, you know, the inception of our company really focused around. Hey, there's nobody offering seller leads that are, are affordable and scalable. Let's do that, right? We really focused on that for years. And then we started having clients saying, you know what, this is great. I'm getting seller leads, which I can't have anywhere else, or, or I'm not finding other places, but I also want buyer's leads. So they're going elsewhere for their buyer's leads, which are typically easier to get than seller leads. Mm -hmm. So we decided, yeah, they are. right? So let's just yeah. do that as well. So I'd say four years ago now, we kind of doubled down a little bit on the buy side. Now we do both. Um, it's good because it's, it's a, it's a circle. You're bringing in seller leads who want to sell a home. So generate buyer leads as well, who want to buy those homes and you advertise your listings to find more buyers. But again, we're not here to tell you what you can and can't do. We're here to suggest what we think you should be doing. And if you're a buyer's agent exclusively right now, come generate buyer's leads. Let's help you do that. And then when you're ready to graduate up to seller leads, let's do both. Right. I'll tell you what, from my own personal experience as an agent, um, I was an 80 20 split at the peak of my career 80% sellers to 20% buyers. And not a word of a, a lie, I had 20% of my time was taken up by my sellers, 80% of my time was taken up by the buyers. Mm -hmm. the, it was a sure. weird ratio of I had way more sellers, but I was spending way more time on my buyers. And at yeah. my peak, I could hold, I think, up to 42 listings, I think was my, my the most I had as a solo agent at, at one time. The most I could help for buyers was five. Any more than five active buyers, and I was pulling my hair out. So not that you can't work them, and not that it doesn't work, and not that you shouldn't try us for your buyer leads, because absolutely you should, but never, you know, gotta, we got to get you listings as well in time, and we won't push too hard on that, but yeah. you'll see. And then there's one more question. I'm going to piggyback on what Logan said, but here's another thing. If you want to create buyers, guess what's going to happen? I think the current statistics is approximately 40% of buyers are also yeah. sellers. Yeah. So if you are talking to buyers, here's a question. As I listen to phone calls all the time, they get screwed up. They don't ask if the person has a house to sell. We have to add that to our script. If you're on the phone with a buyer, don't forget to ask them if they have a house to sell. I know that seems really silly, but um, listening to the number of phone calls that I listen to, it does get asked. So here's the, here's the the other question: Do you do you recommend selecting Instagram when you get started? Okay. I can take that. Yep. Um, I would say uh, depending on the type of ad you're running and the demographic you're looking to to acquire, yes or no. So. I find that the Facebook audience is much more um, beneficial when looking for sellers. Primarily, it's a bit of an older demographic and uh, there's more of that older demographic on there. So regardless of median age, there's more of the older demographic on Facebook. So your money is best served on there. Instagram is a younger audience, um, chock full of potential first time buyers. So if I'm again, a buyer's agent, and especially I want to do a 
first time home buyers program or seminar or something. I'm using Facebook because Facebook's always good, but I'm absolutely running that on Instagram as well. Whereas when I'm saying, hey, do you want to sell a home? My anticipation or, or, or interpretation of the, the data really shows that the strongest age group on Instagram is between 22 and 25 currently. That's one of the biggest cohorts. Now, are they currently buying homes in that cohort? Yeah, potentially. Are they selling homes? Most likely not, right? I would say it's 32 plus is really that age category that's that's selling their first home oftentimes. So um, depends on the angle you're using. Also keep in mind, um, imagery is really important. Facebook, you can get away with darn near anything. Instagram is highly artistic in nature. So if I'm running a boring old map image, which works fantastically well on Facebook, you are going to get skewered on Instagram for that same image. So you have to keep that in mind as well. You're talking to different people for a different purpose, but you can do both. You can come on street text. You can run an ad. You can go boom, boom. I want to do both Instagram on Facebook. Why not? Why leave it up to chance? Come and test it out and see what, uh, see what it does. Well, we're at time. Uh, Marcus, would you like to give us a final thought? Then I'll let Melissa give us a thought. No, I mean, Melissa, you you're amazing. I think the, my final thought is just look to what Melissa does, not just on the lead generation. This was all about, you know, making Facebook ads easy, but once you develop a good predictable lead flow, it just comes down to follow up and how you make that person feel and then making sure you're tracking that because yeah. you don't want to just send them this, these amazing Starbucks cards and three minute videos around their home's value yet have no idea if they're getting it. So tracking yeah. becomes almost equally, if not more important and staying in front of them in an authentic, genuine way that shows, Hey, I'm here for you no matter what, no matter what your time frame is. That's the type of program you get with street text. This is the type of community you get involved with. When you come to our masterminds, people like Melissa will show you how to do it. So you're not starting from scratch. Yeah. That's Melissa? how you learn. Melissa thoughts. Yes. Yes. You, you know, I thank you so much for having me on the show today. I really appreciate it. It was awesome. I always like to collaborate. I, I watch lab code agents a lot. So it was an honor to come on here and I appreciate it. And, you know, I'm just going to keep doing my thing and, you should come check Street Techs out, even for the seven day trial, just to see how it works. Because the thing with Facebook ads is when you try to do them yourself, they just go bad. If you're not a techie for, I just, you know, you guys do it all for me. So it just, it just makes it easy. And if you work the leads, you'll get the business, but you have to be patient. Patient. Logan, any final thoughts? That's it. Consistency is key. You know, patience yeah. is virtue. Um, you got to put in the work to, you to you know, get the, the rewards at the end of the tunnel. So uh, really thankful for Melissa for joining us, obviously, Brian, for hosting and, you know, Marcus, as always, for dropping gold. So, yeah, hopefully we see you guys all on, uh, you know, the, the street tech side of things. Come check it out. If you uh, come sign up for a trial and, and come to the demo and decide it's not for you. Hey, not a problem. At least you, 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 you learn something. You can you'll always every meeting you attend, you're going to learn something. That's the way we yeah, look at it. Very true. Awesome. So here's my final thoughts. We have a seven day free trial. If you're watching it, looking in the chat, you can see that it's streettext.com grow with lab code agents. So take a look at that. Take the free seven day trial. The worst thing that happens is you is well, absolutely nothing. Get a leave. So <laughs> there's, there's no downside to that. And we haven't mentioned this, but this is something I think is really important that um, is that is great about street text. When you try that seven day trial, when you become a, a, a client on a permanent basis, I feel like you probably will. You're going to get a coach. You're going to get someone like Marcus mm -hmm. who, or Logan, who you can reach out to and say, I don't know what I'm doing and they'll help you. And I think that's one of the most valuable things. So many great pieces of software out there don't get used because no one knows how to use them. Yeah. Street text will teach you how to use this system. I think it's extremely simple, but at the same point in time, you know, we got someone to hold your hand through that process. So try it out, work with a coach, go to the masterminds. And then also, please, if you, if you have any questions, you want to watch this again, uh, the replay will be on our YouTube channel. Thank you, Lab Code Agents, for tuning in today. And thanks, everybody, for being here. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.